The gun unloads nearly 70 rounds every second and up to 3,900 rounds a minute. And each 30 millimeter cartridge is the size of a beer bottle. The projectiles alone, whether depleted uranium, armor-piercing incendiary, or high-explosive incendiary, weigh nearly a pound. And it takes two hydraulic motors to spin the barrels and cycle the system. When the Avenger was first integrated into the A-10 airframe, the most immediate issue was that the muzzle flash from the cannon firing blinded the pilot, a particularly dangerous side effect in an aircraft designed to execute low strafing runs while pointed towards the ground. Firing the cannon also left a dark coating of soot on the forward fuselage, including the windscreen, further obstructing the pilot's view. This alone later required the development of a window washing function using a cleaning solution and cooled bleed air from the aircraft's propulsion system. The next problem was that repeated firing caused so much heat and friction that metal components in the gun mounts began to bond together. While this didn't impact firing the gun or flying the aircraft, it made the Gaway difficult to remove for maintenance. Maybe most concerning, when the gases from firing the cannon were released, they had a tendency to flow up over the aircraft's wings and into the A-10's high-set TF-34 turbofan engines, threatening to suffocate them. Not a good thing to have happen at any time, but especially when flying low directly over the enemy. Also, the fumes could contain unburned gunpowder, which could build up on the engine's fan blades. To address these issues, engineers tried lengthening the barrels in an attempt to dissipate the blast, and they also switched from copper bonding in the ammo to plastic. Neither solution solved the problem, though the change in ammunition did reduce wear to the gun and was ultimately adopted. For more than a decade, work continued to develop potential solutions to the A-10's Avenger woes. These included at least three gun gas deflector concepts. The first simply added a shield to the end of the nose in an attempt to mitigate the blast and keep gases away from critical components. Another design extended the overall shape of the nose itself, entirely encapsulating the cannon's muzzle and leaving just a slit for it to shoot through. This gave the A-10 a bizarre, almost anteater-like appearance. The third design involved a muzzle brake that was officially known as the GFU-16A gun gas diverter, and unofficially as the Tickler. This sinister-looking contraption was mounted to the end of the Gowade's barrels and used baffles to reduce the flash and disperse the gases from the muzzle away from the cockpit and engines. After testing proved the device prevented the muzzle flash from blinding the pilot and alleviated the fumes from being ingested into the engines, the device was sent out to A-10 units for installation on their aircraft.